Scotland is not the only place where law laws to tackle hate crime are on the agenda. Over in Ireland, the incitement to violence or hatred and hate offences bill could make expression or possession of content or even ideas which are deemed hateful illegal under the new law. So here to give us the latest on this is the columnist at the Sunday Independent, David Quinn. David, welcome back to the show. Always a pleasure to have you. Um, this is an ongoing thing in Ireland with the Ireland Hate Crime Bill. Could you give us an update of where we are at the moment? OK, so, and thanks for having me on. So, three weeks ago, there was two referendums in Ireland, and I think your viewers heard about that a couple of weeks ago. And uh, so there was one on removing the word mothers from the Constitution in favour of the gender-neutral carers, and there was another one about putting up this... Um, alternative to marriage called durable relationships that would give it a quasi-marriage status. Now, the government and the media and the political establishment were basically all in favour and, and expected them to pass handsomely, but both were defeated by huge, huge margins. And this has been a huge setback the kind of politically correct opinion uh, in this country. And so as a result of that, there's been a kind of major stock take on whether, you know, to use the term the woke agenda has been going too far. And one of the kind of signature pieces of that agenda is, of course, the hate speech legislation that you just referred to there. And now they're having second thoughts about it. This is not to say the thing will ne never be passed, but I think they seem to be putting it on ice and they seem to be considering amendments to water it down. And this is, again, as a result of these, of these two referendums. That's very interesting that the referendums have had this impact. And of course, you're about to get a new Taoiseach as well, aren't you? Uh, do you think that this will make any kind of difference? Um, well, I think it will. So our previous Taoiseach, who was quite well known, was uh, um, Leo Varadkar. And so he very dramatically announced that he's stepping down as Taoiseach, and that's to happen in the next couple of weeks. And then this fellow Simon Harris is to come in. Now, this was kind of like what the Tory party does, that they elect a new leader, a new prime minister, and don't consult the public, and there's been no election, and there's a fair amount of outcry about this. So Simon Harris was kind of the one man who actually wanted to be Taoiseach within the ruling Fine Gael party. And so he's coming along. Now, he's very much a fellow who blows with the wind. Uh, so when we pass... And the abortion law six years ago, he was absolutely fully in favour of that. Uh, but now he sees that the political winds are beginning to shift a bit. You see, I think what happened, what happened in that referendum six years ago is um, what you might call the progressive side decided they now had a licence to do absolutely anything they liked without any opposition whatsoever. And they just kept pressing and pressing and pressing. And I think at a certain point, they were beginning to drive the public nuts. So we were going full out on the trans agenda. Then we had this hate speech law. And I think people were kind of getting a bit tired of it. People are also quite anti-government now as in Britain, because Fine Gael has been in power with some party or other, because there's a coalition government since 2011, just like in Britain. And people just get sick of particular faces, and they got sick of this government. So the referendums a few weeks ago, there was two things going on, anti-government plus kind of anti-the-woke agenda going too far. So I think Simon Harris is kind of going to reflect to some degree the new public mood has been revealed. Well, that's very interesting because I was speaking to Maria Steen on this show a couple of weeks ago and she was making the point that a lot of the major political parties are just in lockstep over these issues. And certainly uh, the uh, Dublin media scene, shall we say, the journalistic class are also seemingly in lockstep. There aren't many dissident voices on this. Given that that is the case, do you think the problems with the hate speech legislation are getting out there to the general public? Are people waking up to the problems that are, that are contained therein? Yes, I think some are. And you see, what's really interesting is, uh, so a few months ago, Sinn Féin, which is the major opposition party in the country, they voted in favour of the bill as a pass to our equivalent of the House of Commons, which is the Dáil. And I think it was only 14 out of the TDs voted against it, and over 100 voted in favour of it, including, again, all the main parties, including Sinn Féin. And now Sinn Féin have said they don't like the bill, they don't think it's fit for purpose, and they have withdrawn their support for it. So that's really interesting. And also, after the referendums were defeated, you have some of the kind of older members of the likes of Fianna Fáil, which is also the government and the Fine Gael party coming out and saying that the hate speech law needs to be pulled back because the public don't want it anymore. In fact, the public, you know, they never wanted it. So basically the way Ireland and I think some other Western countries are kind of governed, the, the government listens to NGOs more than they listen to the public. And the NGOs were fully behind these referendums and they, and they failed so spectacularly that I think it's weakened the power of the NGOs by proving actually these NGOs are basically astroturf campaigns that don't have much in the way of public support at all. It's fascinating stuff. This seems to be the story of our time, that disparity between what the electorate wants and what the political class wants. But mm -hmm. David, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Please do come back to the show again. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you.